Quite a place, isn't it? Pretty much since its inception, Killington, Vermont has been the flagship of eastern skiing. An incredible expanse of terrain spread over six mountains and over 70 miles. In fact, the Killington skier enjoys the most of everything that skiing offers in this part of the world. The most trails, the longest trails, the steepest trails, the most lifts, the most snowmaking. So what do you give to the skier who has everything? I'll give you a hint. It comes in 140 beautifully wrapped packages and it delivers you in a way that's never been done before to the new heart of Killington Ski Resort. It's the Skyship, an amazing marriage of form and function, technology and art that you've got to see to believe. It's comfortable, heated, has its own broadcast music system, and at 1,200 feet per second, it's the fastest, quietest, most incredible ride you'll ever take up a mountain. But the Skyship is more than a wonder of technology. It's a celebration of skiing itself. And in many ways, it symbolizes the philosophy that's always been the cornerstone of the Killington experience. That skiing is about freedom, excitement, beauty, and most of all, fun. And how it came to be is a pretty interesting story. The lift is going to change the whole Killington skiing experience. There isn't anything like this anywhere else in the world. It's the fastest model built in the world. It's the first lift in the world to have individually heated cabins. This lift now serves what is really the heart of Killington, Sky Peak. That is really why we referred to the lift as the backbone of Killington. It really is the middle of Killington. You can go to the east and ski Bear Mountain, ski Sunrise directly off the top, or you can go to the northwest and ski the Killington Basin from the top of the lift. It's about an hour to an hour and a half ski from the top of Sky Peak directly back down here, and yet you're going back up in 12 and a half minutes. That's fast. Press has had unbounded creative energy ever since the day he started. I mean, you can go back and look at some of the original plans and concepts for Killington even before he put a single shovel in the ground, and he had a vision that went far beyond even what's here today. Here we are 35 years later, and we're still trying to catch up to his imagination. Press is a, is a very uh, deep-thinking uh, individual. It's almost a... Um, uh, you know, an artistic or, or the creative spirit that he brings to it. He surely has, has been one that has allowed me and, and many of us here at Killington to explore uh, areas that maybe have, have not been charted before, to um, try to create things that really relate to the spirit of alpine skiing. It truly is a commitment to the sport and to the individual that... Um, uh, partakes in the sport. What Killington really is, is, is a group of people that, that just fully understand that there's always something that um, can be adjusted or, or expanded or created that um, creates a new environment and expands this envelope that people enjoy called skiing or recreating in the mountains. Well, I imagine that we would be uh, the premier ski area in the eastern United States but uh, I must say that I never really imagined that we would have uh, quite such exotic equipment as the uh, Killington Skyship and the artwork that's associated with it. We've had a series of innovations here. I mean, uh, the installation of snowmaking way back in 1963, and then the development of the graduated length method where we taught thousands and thousands of people to ski uh, in a much more comfortable uh, and rapid way. The original gondola was built in uh, 1968. There were a lot of hurdles to overcome, uh, but uh, we did it. We built that lift ourselves, and it was a monumental lift at that time, being three and a half miles long and rising almost 3,200 feet. It was a very advanced, the most advanced design in the world at that time. Uh, we have a huge diversity of skiing at Killington because of the nine square miles of terrain that we cover. We've done a lot of things for skiing, but now suddenly we have an intellectual extension of of the sport, uh, something else to enjoy while you're out there. So you enjoy the rhythm and challenge of the sport itself, the beauty of nature around you, and now the beauty and creation uh, that people have put together. I think that's very exciting for the sport.
As advanced as it was for its time, the original gondola was built in large part by Press Smith and Hank Lundy. This new skyship, on the other hand, would require the best talents in the industry to engineer and construct. No other ski resort had ever attempted a project of this scope before. It would require 50 new towers, hundreds of yards of concrete, and five miles of cable. And there were a lot of questions to be answered. Like how would you heat the cabins? How would you bring in music? How would you apply the dozens of designs and variations? And just how do you build something of this magnitude on the side of the biggest ski mountain in the East? The project really encompasses much more than just a new lift. We cut two major trails, uh, Vertigo and Cruise Control. We cut several smaller trails off Sky Peak to help improve the traffic flow in the unload area. Um, we also installed snowmaking on Four Mile. Our folks did all the trail clearing, the blasting for the lift line, all the new trail construction, we, we installed all the snowmaking ourselves. It's intense, very challenging, intense, and a lot of fun. It takes equipment operators that are extremely knowledgeable and very, very experienced. When you consider working under helicopters, digging holes in the sides of steep terrain, um, I, I wish I knew the pounds of dynamite that we, we set off this summer in very difficult terrain. It's all high-risk construction, and uh, it's, it's a challenge, and to be able to do it without any major injuries, we, we're very proud of that. I think to the average person, um, it probably looks terrifying to, to those of us who have done it for a long time, we're used to it, and, and it's sort of our way of doing business. The, the lift construction, the actual constructing of the lift was pretty much all Poma. They were flat out six days a week and then seven days a week by, by August. Poma would be JF. Rick Spear played a key role in the layout and in the early um, technical problems that we had to overcome. Dave Wilcox and I started on this project in about 1988 or 89, something like that, talking about replacing the gondola. JF got involved because, you know, how are we going to take the old one out, put the new one in? We went to Switzerland, we went to France, we went to Colorado, we went to California. We, you know, we got all over the place looking at systems. And it's a very, you know, it's a very special project. I mean, it's a two-section gondola with a connection in the middle. And he had his hands full. We had to redesign everything here from scratch and incorporate all the new technologies in it. The profile was, was, was very involved because they had a gondola here that they ran for 25 or 30 years. Okay, so they knew exactly where the wind problems were. And it wasn't natural for us to design our line like that. You know, so they had to cut here, fill there. Our people in the design office, they're artists too, you know. That's what we, that's what we pride ourselves in, in as a long-lasting, uh, high-quality product. There's so many unique parts of this, this whole project, the radio, the heat. First, we started to see what can be used for heater. We don't have electricity in here. So we cannot use electrical power or electro, electrical heaters. And then uh, finally we, we found these heaters. This is a, a totally new system and these are fantastic uh, units. Small, they are small, they're compact, they have a good heating capacity. When you see the cabins in the, fa in the plant, you see the heater box dismounted, it looks great, it, it's nice. But when you see it here in Killington with the snow and you see all just all the different designs coming, passing by, that's, it's just fantastic. I liken this project to Killington and to Press and to everything that this mountain really represents. This company has a culture all of its own and they have a very bold and aggressive nature. When I started working on this project, I, uh, I went to a, a friend and a business associate of mine named Raymond Yu and he has a design studio. So we worked hand in hand on this project in the beginning. I did, I don't know, about 15, 16 different designs. Then another 20 designs were done by um, Raymond Yu and another gentleman named Stephen Lee. At that point, I thought we should take it to another level. Um, and we had been talking about this uh, work of art, uh, that this concept was really a mobile work of art. And so why not bring in renowned artists? I called George Snyder. And uh, this is one of his pieces here. I was thrilled at his response. You know, he's a skier, and he said, yeah, absolutely, that would be great. I'd love to do it. That's how we got off and, uh, and running. And then 
I talked to uh, Russell Jacques. He loved the idea, and so he was on board. Um, then the Swiss contingency, CWA, the manufacturers of the car over in Switzerland, called and said, hey, you know, we, we have this great artist. Could we invite him to submit a design? And I thought, this is just too wonderful. You know, the camaraderie, the friendship, the, uh, the spirit of the project was just continuing to build. Yonkel Ginsberg is the, is the, was the last artist to get involved. He brought to the table something so different than anybody else had done. Um, and, and those are our signature artists. So there are four signature artists and four uh, graphic artists involved. And um, it's been a privilege to be able to create something uh, for Killington, for press, um, that he considers to be the most exciting thing to happen in the ski business in 20 years. These sky ships in the sky, this gives you the experience to, to, to look at art in a different setting other than in an urban setting or in a gallery, something like that. And I show in galleries around the country and a lot of people don't even approach galleries, don't go in them just because of the, the connotation of gallery. I looked at the form as an art object before I even started painting on the, the sky ship. We, we had a crew of about six to eight of us working on this, this particular sky ship. There were no sketches that looked like this. I, I, I drew directly on the sky ship. I think in art that if you're too contrived, it looks that way, it's no fun in the end. Skiing is a very, it's a, it is a, a visual experience. Skiing is an individual sport. It's absolutely inspirational. It's, it's beautiful, the surroundings, the, the, the sounds of the skis. I love to ski, I love to paint. Is, you know, you're bringing two concepts together that to me were in different worlds, but to mesh the two, it was, it was quite exciting. I was very proud of it when I finished it, I'll be quite, quite honest. But when I first approached it, I was very apprehensive. Uh, even the first few days painting on it, I didn't really know what it would look like. But the finished product, I, I, was, I felt very good about it, very proud of it. The marriage of the, the uh, sky ships and the, the art forms, it's, it's a, a, a wonderful uh, celebration of skiing and art. Look at the images on Metallica. I think you would agree with me that if you were to scout the mountains, some of the actual lines that I used, you might find as imprints from a skier in the snow. I had completed a large uh, sculpture project with, uh, for Press Smith. After completing that, we talked about this exciting project, and I said that I was really interested in the idea of taking sculpture or paints and applying them to these wonderful cars. And the concept of an art gallery in the sky, I could envision as they spoke about it. It came to LA, and I was so impressed with how carefully it was all orchestrated. And I thought to myself that whatever I do to this has to embody or at least factor in the same quality and caring that went into the construction of this. I work with uh, actually a total of two and a half persons. I would say it's a very distinct collaborative. I hold it or you hold it, I weld it or you weld it, you tack it or I tack it. What my, my job or my goal is to take what is already a piece of sculpture or work of art and to embellish that. I look at it and I, I have a sense it's important to me that it be right, and in this, in this application, it was right. design is not really different to my usual work. What you see on the cabin is me, 
You'll see the same in my paintings hanging in the galleries. I am a skier myself, and I think that every skier will want to see nicer cable railways. It was a positive surprise. As a Swiss, it was a great pleasure to do something like this for the Americans. The times of art have changed. Art has to be brought to the people, and not the other way around. Artistically, I needed to uh, soul search myself and, and see if I wanted to do something that maybe construed as, a, as an enterprise that it's outside of the world, world of art. Dina called me and, and she said, we're gonna create all of these wonderful things that will be traveling throughout skies and suddenly clicked in my mind. And I accepted it as today, I've been standing and looking at my work of art, traveling across the clouds. And it, it, as the clouds change and the light changes, the work changed. It was just exactly what I wanted it to be. So it was a dream come true. And I said to myself, what would I like to see? And I said, well, if I would be there in the winter, I most likely would like to see a butterfly, which doesn't exist at the time. It's, it's what we don't have that we desperately want. When I accepted this project, I did have a condition, and it was that I didn't want to create a craft that was moving, that was partially painted. I, uh, discovered this process called contravision, where I could cover the windows and those windows could be looked from outside as a full object of art. However, if you're inside and you're looking out, the obstruction is minimal. It's like looking through sunglasses. It could become another medium. I, I know that it will raise many eyebrows, but I know one thing. I know nobody who will pass by and won't look up and say, look at this. I guarantee you that People from Switzerland and people from Canada and people from California will be coming to not only look at those crafts, but actually travel in them. And they will be telling stories to everybody else about it. Meanwhile, back on the mountain, the construction of the skyship itself was well underway. And there was no small amount of artistry involved in that process.
And the rest, as they say, is history. Of course, the maiden voyage was quite an event, requiring a dedication ceremony with a certain amount of pomp and circumstance and a good amount of celebrating by everyone involved. this building 25 years ago but right now this is so much more exciting it's unbelievable it's just another step of going to Lincoln having fun again uh, feels great everybody uh, worked hard yeah it's just as exciting probably more so I was a dreamer and I always knew that one day I would come up with something that's very big so I said one day if I can develop a way that I can paint as big as the sky people will notice it and sure enough, this project came along, and I said to myself, my God, this is as close as I could be in the come. This has been evolving for about a year now, and we've been excited about it, but we never realized what it would look like until we got everything here and actually ran the lift today. And it's the first chance I've had to see the whole gallery in the sky on one ride. It's just phenomenal. The Killington Sky Show, in a way the perfect symbol of the Killington experience a celebration of skiing.